Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss the structures which are under combined loadings. Throughout this course, we have already learned how to determine the stress distributions in a member subjected to the following types of loads. 1. Axial force. 2. Bending moment. 3. Shear force. 4. Torsional moment. Also, we learned how to deal with a thin-walled pressure vessels. If the vessel is a thin-walled with cylindrical shape, then the internal pressure P will cause a biaxial state of stresses, sigma 1 equals PR over T, and sigma 2 equals PR over T2, hoop and longitudinal stresses respectfully. If the vessel is a thin walled with spherical shape, then sigma 1 equals sigma 2 equals PR over 2T. Structures are often subjected to several types of loadings simultaneously. For example, this chimney is subjected to the combined loading of its weight and wind, or this ski gondola is subjected to the combined loadings of axial load and bending moment. When this is the case, we can simply use the method of superposition to obtain the resultant stress distribution, providing the material remains linear elastic. The general procedure of the analysis of the structures under combined loadings can be summarized into the following six steps. 1. Section the member perpendicular to its axis at the point where stress is to be determined. Two. Obtain the resultant internal normal and shear forces and the bending and torsional moments. Three, the force components P and V should act through the centroid of the cross section. The moment components M and T should be calculated about centroidal axis. Four, determine the stress components, normal and shear components associated with each internal loading. Five, once the normal and shear stress components have been determined, use the principle of superposition and calculate the resultant normal and shear stress components. Six, show the results on an element or show the results as a stress distribution on the member's cross section. Now we're going to look at an example. The beam has a rectangular cross section and is subjected to the loading shown. Determine the state of stress at point B. Sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy. The first step is to section the member at point B. The second step is to obtain the internal normal and shear stresses. Also, we must calculate the moment components M and T. From the equilibrium equations, here our normal force P equals 1000 newtons, V equals 800 newtons. Our bending moment M is the product of V which is 800 newtons, times the vertical distance to point B, which is 100 millimeters. Therefore, the bending moment at point B is 80 kilonewton millimeters. The third step is to determine the stress components associated with each internal loading. Stress caused by axial load P can be calculated by dividing the load P by the cross-sectional area which is 40 millimeters times 30 millimeters. Thus, the normal stress caused by axial load P is 0.833 megapascals. Shear stress caused by shear force V can be calculated using the formula tau xy equals VQ over IT. Q equals Y bar prime times A prime which is also equal to y bar prime times a prime, where a prime is the area of the bottom portion of the member's cross-sectional area below the section plane at point B, where t is measured, and y bar prime is the distance from the na to the centroid of a prime, which in the example is 15 millimeters. Here, a prime is 300 millimeters squared and T equals 300 millimeters. In the moment of inertia of the entire cross-sectional area about the NA axis can be calculated using 1 over 12 times base times height cubed. 
Therefore, we can write tau xy equals vq over it equals 0 0.75 megapascals. Normal stress caused by the bending moment can be calculated using the flexure formula. Sigma x equals negative my over i. Here, y is the distance of point b from the na axis, which is 10 millimeters. Therefore, sigma x equals negative my over i equals negative 5 megapascals. Now we need to use the principle of superposition and calculate the resultant normal and shear stress component. Sigma x equals positive 0 0.833 minus 5.0 equals negative 4.167 megapascals. The negative sign indicates that this is a compressive stress. Therefore, sigma y equals 0, tau xy equals 0 0.75 megapascals. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Best of luck with the lab.